All right, how, many, how many people in the last year have changed, tweaked, or trashed your elevator speech? In the last six months. In the last six weeks. As I'm speaking, <laughs> you were saying, I need to work on my elevator speech. <laughs> yeah. I struggled with mine for years. It, it was always a work in progress. And, and we've all been there. You go to a networking event, a social function, or a seminar, and the leader says, uh, you know what, before we get started, we're going to go around the room. Everyone's going to introduce themselves. Uh, stand up, tell us who you are, what you do, give us your elevator speech. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. All right. Now, did anybody ever feel like this? <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, it was always a religious moment because I would pray, please, don't call me first. <laughs> I, I know I should have been prepared for this. I will next time. Ring a bell, anyone? All right. and, then, and then the elevator speeches start. And, and some of them, they're pretty good. You know, I'm Don. I'm an estate planning attorney. I've been doing this for 25 years. You might have read some of my articles in the local media. If you have an estate plan and you want to have it reviewed, or you're thinking about getting one, we should have a conversation. I'm Don. Now, I feel pretty comfortable talking to Don. He establishes credibility. Sounds like he knows what he's doing. He said it in a forceful, nice manner. That sounds pretty good. Now, then there are some that are boring. You know, I'm Louise. I'm a bookkeeper. Glad to be here. Why would you want to talk to Louise? She's done nothing to distinguish herself, right? And then, some are just outrageous. And, and I know a guy, I swear, if he sells 10 products, he'll tell you about 12 of them. <laughs> he'll give you case studies on 13. If somebody's dinging the timer that he's taking up somebody else's time, it doesn't matter to him, so he'll take up more time. And he talks about so much stuff, I would never want to have anything to do with them. And then there are those people that you have no idea what they're doing. You're just wondering about them. It's confusing. And it might be something like, I'm Bill, the financial plumber, and I'm going to show you how to flush all of your financial problems down the toilet. You know, I don't know what Bill's selling, but I'm not buying. You know, be honest with you. And some of these people, if you were in an elevator with them, <laughs> you'd want to get out. At least, at least you'd be hitting that stop button, right? Uh, so, so going forward, we want to talk about what is an elevator speech, uh, why have one, what are the goals of an elevator speech, I want to talk about, to you about how I crafted the elevator speech template I've got. I'm going to deliver my elevator speech, and then we're going to break it down. I've got time set aside for questions, and then we'll conclude. So an elevator speech was based upon the idea that you get into an elevator and somebody says, what do you do? That by the time you reach the next floor or the next stop, you could tell them. I've never given an elevator speech in an elevator. Has anybody? No. <laughs> But the concept is good. It had to be something that was relatively quick that somebody would understand what you do. And one of the premises of an elevator speech is that <clears throat> no selling. It's just to deliver content. Because what you want to do is have somebody completely understand what you do and that they might want to have a conversation later. And, and we've all had people give us those elevator speeches where they're almost taking out an order pad, right? And you're not going to buy from them, not at that point. So the essence of an elevator speech is that it clearly articulates what you do very concisely and that it has impact. That it will be memorable. 